again, it's something completely different. Um, and sort of the perpetual joke joke of um, in, in Linux is that this is the year of the Linux, like the Linux desktop. But a lot of things have happened uh, over the years. Uh, I think, I mean, Linux started in the 90s, right? But already in 1999, um, it was the year of the Linux camera, uh, where Axis released their first uh, product, the Axis 2010, Google told me, uh, that ran Linux. Um, they did a good job of that. Um, did their own microarchitecture, compiler, and Linux port. Um, and then uh, sort of the party continued, uh, and I think a lot of us in the old, and you guys in the audience uh, have been part of uh, getting Linux into smartphones. And uh, actually, last year, Stack Overflow uh, made a survey, and it turns out that uh, there are no now more developers preferring Linux over Mac OS. So there's still a lot of Windows users out there, but they sort of declared that this is the year, the last year was the year of the um, Linux desktop. Um, and also last year we sh saw that Linux is now running on uh, bicycles. And uh, tomorrow uh, we talk about <laughs> <laughs> how they will uh, take over cars. Right, so, so, so what's left, right? In gaming is uh, one area there where Linux is definitely dominating, but um, maybe this year. Um, but that's not where I started. Um, I started uh, um, with my son uh, turning seven and asking like, hey papa, I, I want a computer, I want to play some games. I said, like, okay, let's build a computer for you. So um, I figured that if he wants to play some games, he's going to learn something in the process. Uh, so we set up uh, a Raspberry Pi. I found a Raspberry Pi uh, card, uh, got a case for it. We put it together, screwed it together. Um, showed him that we actually have to put some, some software on a card to make it boot, like you need a program. Could show him the processor, memory, and all of those pieces to show him that this is some, some magical um, screen that just works. It has actually, it has components and um, uh, it's, uh, it runs on, on something. Um, we also um, did a bit of soldering and, and hooking up a, a DB9 connector so, so we could play um, Bubble Bubble uh, using my old Tac2 joystick. So we had loads of fun. And it's great to, to run uh, these sort of exercises uh, to, to learn the basics of computer technology. But it, Raspberry Pis, especially the early versions, have limits. And you can't really get to the new ones um, any longer. Like the, the compo component shortage is still there, so you can't get something that will actually run a nice desktop or something. Otherwise, this would have been great for everything. You could use this as the only computer. So I started looking for alternative to keep him like interested. We still use this and have fun with it, but we, we needed something beefier too uh, for his future needs. Um, so uh, I started a wish list um, to try to figure out what we needed. Um, it definitely needs to run some sort of Linux um, because yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna install Windows ever again. Um, I don't know how I can truly claim that I know nothing of Windows anymore. It's like support calls is like no, I don't use Windows. And I don't want, I mean, it's known that, I mean, Windows will, will probably go away. Uh, so he should, there's no need to learn it. Uh, it should be hackable, should be able to replace all the software components because, yeah, there's no fun in doing anything else. Um, it needs some sort of active community support because I don't want the hardware to die once the um, vendor decides that it's no longer economically viable to, to support it. Uh, and it should be able to play some games, both old and, and fairly new ones. Um, so you can do both, both do some programming, hacking, and, and, and do some gaming, just like I did when I was that age. And it should be portable, uh, because that's how kids use computers these days. Um, yeah, they're used to just carrying stuff around. Um, so um, I went looking, and I found something called the Steam Deck that was launched uh, last year. People had to wait a long time to get to the hardware, but um, finally it came out. 
uh, has a pretty decent CPU um, uh, and, and GPU, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's a lot more than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, lots of storage options. Um, uh, it comes with uh, built-in storage uh, in form of EM an EMMC or a weird form factor uh, NVMe drive. Um, and uh, external storage um, using a good interface so you can actually boot and, and run stuff off the uh, SD card. Has a decent display and uh, have all the inputs you could ever wish for uh, except the keyboard. Uh, so uh, you need to connect an external keyboard if you want to do any desktop work, but uh, that comes with this auto form factor. Um, battery life is not bad. Uh, if you do some high intensity gaming stuff, so you can get three or four hours out of it. And it costs like uh, just a fairly decent tablet, and it could do a lot more. So um, I thought that was the droid I was looking for. Um, but uh, of course, uh, it has to run some decent software to, to actually work. Um, and I looked into it, and, and it's not only running Linux, it's actually running something very close to upstream, and it's all open source. So this, the software on this thing um, comes with, yeah, it comes with SteamOS, which is based on Arch Linux, um, and a fairly recent Linux kernel. So it boots off UEFI, which gives you um, a few extra seconds of boot time and, and some convenience. So uh, it's, it's sort of, Nice in a way, uh, but it, 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 they could definitely make it boot faster without UEFI. Uh, the firmware is proprietary, but I'm sure someone will make a core uh, boot port any day. Um, and um, it can run both native Linux uh, games and apps um, over the uh, KDA Plasma uh, desktop environment. And it has a Windows emulation layer based on Wine called Proton, so you can run actually games that were built for Windows on this thing and run it really well. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so does it actually uh, perform? Um, well, it runs Doom, of course. You have John Deere characters running uh, Doom and, and whatnot, oscilloscopes. Uh, so, of course, this thing does run it, it runs Quake, and, 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 and all the stuff that I wanted. And, and then on top of that, like 5,000 titles have been um, certified to work on this. So the compatibility in Linux, that Proton thing, is, is pretty good. There are some quirks. Sometimes things don't work ex as expected, but I think that's the price I'm willing to pay to, to run upstream software. Um, and, of course, you can do all the... Um, all the fun uh, retro stuff. Uh, so it's powerful enough to emulate anything, almost, uh, except maybe the latest consoles. So that's, that's cool. Um, and it also has a desktop mode, so you can turn this into a regular computer. Um, yeah, it runs this KDA Plasma, um, which has like a, like a, I don't know, uh, an environment that peop most people are used to. So it would be an easy way to get people to use it. Um, it has a, uh, like an app store or yeah, discovery app uh, that you, allows you to search and install stuff. I tried if this would actually like, enable me to do anything interesting. And uh, actually I could find the, the, the DJ app I'm, I'm using um, in the store and it just installs fairly recent and it just works. So without, it just ships with something that will actually enable you to, to run um, uh, applications uh, without any trouble. But it's sort of limited without uh, an external keyboard. It has an on-screen key on keyboard thing, uh, but it's really fiddly. But if you connect it to a docking station, you have a full PC. So I actually did the presentation using the Steam Deck, uh, and like I couldn't really tell the difference between this and my, my laptop. So um, you can use it in so many ways. And, of course, this is a Linux and, and kernel uh, conference, so, of course, I had to dig in and see what, what they did to the kernel. Um, it took some digging to find the source for this, uh, but if you look in the right place and you unpack uh, the right uh, binary, you can download off that link uh, and rename 
um, uh, a directory to .git, you can get the full Git history. Um, I don't know why they do it like that. But um, apart from that, when you, once you you see that, um, you can see a fairly nice, uh, uh, yeah, like a, a 5.13 kernel with some feature branches merged on top of that. Um, and uh, there are 3,734 <laughs> 3, patches, but um, it's mainly uh, backports. So it looks like uh, the work Collabora uh, has done in, in maintaining this it, it has been according to upstream first policy, so they actually submit stuff upstream. Um, not all of it is in the upstream kernel, on, on, uh, but uh, there are, of course, some embedded style hacks. These guys have been forced to uh, work around hardware quirks in, in software, and you know there's always malfunctioning firmware and so on. But um, there's not a lot. It's pretty, it's like an x86 machine uh, with some small amount of sprinkled uh, embedded style hacks. Uh, um, they've done some work in, in uh, enabling better compatibility with uh, um, Windows interfaces. So they've uh, worked on uh, uh, something called Futix Weight Multiple that has an interesting LWN uh, article. That will make um, like the compatibility with uh, Linux, uh, Windows games on Linux um, perform better. It works, but uh, it performs, I don't know, 10% better with uh, this new ABI. Uh, so this is what ships with a Steam Deck, but you can boot an upstream kernel just fine. It's just, uh, it just magically works. Uh, so you, and, and you don't even need to jailbreak this thing, which uh, this sort of takes a little bit out the fun out of it, <laughs> but it's also like, yeah, they Valve just didn't see any need of locking people in. Like, why should they? Yeah, they make money out of the games, and like, no, no fuss. Um, so you can just plug in a a memory card uh, in the memory card slot and install the distribution of choice. So. Um, Arch Linux uh, installs and works like a charm. Um, yeah, you can, I tried uh, installing Fedora, that works too. It's just um, a little inconvenient since it like, replaces the boot settings in the BIOS and you will have to recover that to boot into the original Steam OS. Um, Arch Linux doesn't do that. Um, and if you're gonna do this, get like a high performing uh, SD card. Uh, um, because uh, the normal ones uh, don't perform as a, like a boot disk. So, like, I, I, I really don't have any <laughs> further wishes. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this device. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit hard to hand it off to my son. <laughs> There's a new one coming out, so he can get the old one. Yeah, uh, so, so I think this is like the year of the Linux handheld. Um, uh, with this is a pretty, pretty great piece of hardware, uh, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, I think you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it opens up new possibilities you can't do with a laptop or, or a phone. It has all these uh, joysticks and things, so you can come up with all kinds of evil genius projects. But. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can connect it. Yep, yep, that works. Uh, I mean, just plug it in. It doesn't work with all Thunderbolt, like docking stations, but um, at least a few didn't work with this one. Uh, but that's, uh, that, that's, I think you can fix that with patches. Um, and the gaming is, is pretty good. Uh, and it's really, really good that all, this is all supported upstream, and I'm pretty impressed by the work they've done. And the sort of just the attitude, like, why why not work upstream? So Valve is really doing it right. Um, and uh, Valve is not the only one, right? We hear a lot that people are finally accepting uh, upstream first policies. Um, I mean, uh, uh, this guy Bex, uh, even Red Hat is doing it, right? So, yeah, I mean, we've, we've been talking about this and maintaining out of three patches for a long time. So finally, like, we. It's not an issue anymore, so I'm, I'm really, really, really happy about that. Um, 
So, well, thanks. And uh, uh, any questions before we head downtown? Steam Deck, yeah. Yeah, and, and don't hold my um, uh, employer responsible for my gifts. Uh, this, 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 present, this presentation was only, only from me. <laughs> What's the new one? Uh, they haven't said, but uh, there, there is something in store, yeah. But yeah, like for now, it's, I think it's good enough. Yeah. The, the what? The? No, it's, it's Windows based. Yeah, that takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. <laughs> but also, Proton and Apple teach you about FSR on all games, even games that doesn't support actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Any questions? You're a well doing it right, but it's AMD also doing it right, all the firmware blocks too. Oh, the firmware blocks, there are probably some firmware blocks, but uh, it's not worth that much. Uh, I, I, I'm not a GPU guy, so I'm not. <laughs> I think it's running radio and SI and everything. There's lots of GPU patches, so I think it's running SI. So it's more like that all the program blocks, like it still has a lot of there. If you're working on the newest stuff like that, it's like, oh, that's secret sauce, then you only have part of the virus to solve for the, and they're going down by all the patches and stuff like that in the program blocks. There's firmware for the GPUs, sure. All right, uh, so that wraps up today's program. Um, the evening event starts in about an hour downtown, so I think if the weather is still nice, I think most of us will just take a stroll down. Um, I think it will start serving food at six, but if you arrive a little later, that's no problem. Uh, they, would, yeah, they can't deliver 70 burgers at the same time anyway, so. But there'll be some nachos, I'm told, on the tables, and uh, order to start a beer, and, and be patient in that, and then you do it all right. Yeah. Yeah, bring a friend. <laughs> bring a friend. <laughs> all right, and uh, see you guys tomorrow, uh, if you're not going to join us. Thanks.